welcome, <laughs> welcome back to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Today we'll be talking about a billion dollar industry, the video game industry, with the co-hosts of the All Day I Play Radio Podcast, John and Brian. John and Brian, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Us. Thank you for having us. Um, so we'll do this as a round table. We'll just basically throw out a question and then just give me your thoughts and we'll uh, jump it back and forth. But before we go, uh, because this is an audio show, uh, Jonathan, can I just get you to basically say your name so that way people know your voice and then Brian, you to do the same as well. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's John Moon. I am one half of All Day I Play Radio. Hey, and it's your homie Brian from All Day I Play Radio. Thank you for having us on the show, Chris. Hey, no problem. Um, I usually start off with duty to serve, but for you guys, it's going to be something different. What does video games mean to you? We'll start with you, John. Oh man. Um, how far back are we going? Like, it just means a lot, you know, it's a, for me, it's an outlet to, you know, especially what's going as far as today, what's going on. It's an outlet. It's something, you know, me and my wife bond over. It's, uh, you know, I met Brian, my co-host, uh, became quick friends i've never met him like face to face in real life so that's yeah. we met him yeah right we, okay. <laughs> we, yeah i met him through overwatch you know yeah. so it's like you know video games just mean a lot to me is you know it's, i was our only child growing up so that's really all i had I nobody in my family's my age at the time so that's really my only you know again an outlet so you know it just means a lot to me i, I love video games and brian what about yourself Hey, like John said, it's an outlet. It's a way. It's a way to kind of escape. Um, it's a way to, you know, I love stories. So the fact that not only do I get to watch them, but I get to take part in them is something that has always been why I'm always into like, you know, the next game and the next game and the next game because I want to be a part of the experience and everything just comes together as a, a story being played. And, and, and that's a great uh, segue to one of the topics that we're going to be talking about is the experience of the games. But uh, for my listeners, mm -hmm. what was your first introduction to video games? Do you remember the first game, the first console you got that you said, holy crap, this is, this is perfect. This is, I see Brian rolling his eyes and smiling with a big ass grin right now. So what was your first console and what was your first game that you played Brian? So I guess, uh, I don't know the first game I played, but I can, the first game like that I can recall yeah. was uh, my father had a, a Mattel in television and mm. it was, it was, yes, yeah, really old. Um, <laughs> and I remember playing boxing because back then you could have like really generic ass titles for games and it didn't matter, you know? Uh, so it was just this Sprite, these two Sprites, which seemed to be, you know, maybe in the numbers of tens, you know, uh, punching each other back and forth. <laughs> and it was, and I was, you know, in awe of the fact that this could be controlled and you could play against someone else. That's the first memory that I have of video games. Well, now, just to jump on that, uh, my father had an Atari. That was his gaming choice. And I'm not sure if your father did this, but I was not allowed to use the gaming console because he thought I would break it. Was this like your father? Or was he was he willing to show you the ropes in some sort of way uh, to let you play boxing? <laughs> he would only, my dad would only give us like maybe 10 to 15 minutes at a time. <gasps> oh. We weren't allowed to play it, you know, unless he was there and we would only play it if he really wanted to play. And, you know, by the time I was of age to be able to play something, he didn't want to play anymore. So I barely got to see it. <laughs> <laughs> barely got to see that thing. What about yourself, John? Oh man. NES. That was uh, the Mario duck hunt combo. And then, you know, I just said the story last week, like my mom bought me, um, you know, mind you, I'm like four or five when this happened, you know, she bought me the Mario duck hunt that came with the NES. Then she bought me Sesame street, ABC one, two, three. Then she bought me metal gear. So, you know, <laughs> that was my first memory. I played metal gear. It left a sour taste in my mouth. Cause again, I'm five or six. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> so I just was like, let me go back to shooting ducks out the air. But you know, that shooting was my ducks with the red gun that you go. Yeah. Okay, I think I've got it. <laughs> Yeah, and then my friends would like, you know, come by and just hold its gun up to the TV. <laughs> to the screen. Yeah, yeah like, I was like, this is that. cheating, you know. Ah, uh, come on. Yeah. 
hey no understandable and that's uh those are two very different unique gaming systems that you both got to introduce to and two different ga- yeah. uh unique games so uh you mentioned it briefly beforehand john but you guys met through online playing of overwatch which uh yes. as a listener of your show uh you you mentioned a lot of overwatch it <laughs> might be a good thing and a bad thing from time to time it's, but it's, <laughs> it's a toss up <laughs> It's so toxic, man. It's, yeah. it's a toxic relationship. Yeah. It's Not between the two of you, though, right? You guys, you guys, nah, seem no, no, they're no. far. Yeah. <laughs> nah, we, we, uh, we, we are each other's uh, support through the yeah. Overwatch trauma. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's so, like another reason because like one of us would be like over it, then the other would be like, come on, well, let's play. And then it's like a never ending back and forth. <laughs> type of, yeah. So, how did the idea of the show come about? Because that's because you guys seem like you guys listening to the show, you have you've known each other for years and years and years, but it seems like you guys just met. So how did the idea of the show come about? And was it a quick friendship that you guys made over the idea of games? Anyone wants to take that? Go ahead. Well, in regard to the friendship aspect, yeah, um, again, we met through Overwatch uh, through a mutual friend, Greg. He grew up with Ryan. I, he moved over here to the, um, the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. And, you know, I met him through, you know, wrestling. We're both wrestling fans, me and uh, Greg. He was a guest on the show a couple of times. And, uh, yeah, we just he, we were playing Overwatch one day and he was like, I'm about to invite my friend Brian on. OK, cool. He came on. You know, again, it holds to this day. We were the last two on. Everybody else got off. We were still, you know, kicking it. And, you know, we just hit it off from there. And we just developed a friendship. Now, uh, but you could uh, speak on how the podcast came along. Yeah, and as far as a podcast, we were, uh, it was last year, um, you know, COVID year. And, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I had done some other, you know, YouTube stuff in the past. And John had as well. Uh, but, you know, they just kind of fizzled out like, things happen on YouTube. Uh, and, uh, you know, one day I was just like, Hey man, you know, you, you, uh, you want to do a podcast? Like, you know, we talk about video games while we're playing video games. We might as well like right. create some sort of, uh, you know, uh, brand and, you know, hopefully have an audience and, you know, sounds like we do to some extent. Uh, mm-hmm. so we want to keep, you know, doing that. And so we decided to make the show and I already had all day I play as my, you know, previous YouTube channel. So, we just called it all day. I play radio, and now we're here. What yeah. what's what's the what's the message behind the show that you want to get out? Because when you come up with an idea for a podcast and a show, you have to come up with an idea of what the message and what the brand wants to get out. So uh, I've listened to it, but for my listeners who should tune into the show, what would they be expecting when they tune in? I mean, it's just like uh, it's this conversation between two really close friends, and you know, it's. You know, John, John, I've told John this before. John is the only friend that I have that I can hurt his feelings. You know what I mean? Like, like that. <laughs> okay. I, can, I can tell I can tell him the truth. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and it and it'd be and vice like, versa. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, like, you know, I don't I don't have too many friends that I can really do that with without, you know, taking serious offense to me telling them the truth. Like and, brutal you know. honesty. Is, yeah. so where does that come key. from for the two, between the two of you, though? Because it, for people who've just known each other for a short period of time, it seems like, you, like I said, you've known each other for years. And if you're willing to be brutally honest with them, where does that come from? Is it just the the spark that you guys had together without you went, OK, we're good friends? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's the energy. You know, I felt, you know, he reminds me of friends here, you know, back home. So, you know, he reminded me, he gave me that vibe. And I, you know, I'm a nice, easygoing guy. I let a lot of stuff roll off my back. He read that too. You know, I don't get upset easily anymore. (laughs) So, you know, (laughs) and so, you know, we just bonded and, you know, stuff just, you know, came out our mouth and we were like, what? But, you know, and just go go back and forth. So it's, it's, it's just a mutual friendship and we just you know felt each other's energy and we went off of that it's trust for me you know I, yeah i trust john so same your shows are so in depth it seems like you guys are very uh uh there's a big there's a good flow to the show but you guys have such a oh, depth of knowledge of the gaming industry where did that come from is it just because you love games that much you learn about it or is it just something you've just picked up over time like me for me um 
I was not into developers. All. I just knew titles, right? So, you know, I knew Marvel's Capcom. I knew Street Fighter. I knew Mario. You know, I knew, just knew the basics. I, like, I didn't learn into, I didn't learn, like, developer and all this other jargon until I met Brian. Brian is, like, I, I, it blew my mind how much he knew. I was like, what? Who is this? And, you know, now I'm, like, obsessed with Atlas. I, I didn't get obsessed with developers at first. So, you know, um, Brian, you know, took the helm on that. I was more so like the commentary at first, but I'm slowly learning. He's slowly teaching me along the way for, in my about, regard. And Brian, what about yourself? Um, I just really enjoyed, you know, the industry aspect of it. Um, I've always looked at it from, you know, even as a kid, like I liked the behind the scenes, how it operated. And, you know, it just kind of really intrigued me. You know, when I was younger, I wanted to go to school to get into the industry, you know, not necessarily from a programming or, you know, design standpoint, but, you know, behind the scenes guy, you know, I like business like that, you know, I guess, I don't know. Well, one thing that I find interesting <laughs> during your show, you talk about your love, the story, you love the story of the actual game. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about that a little bit. Where does the story come into play when you're playing a video game? Because I can play a video game and I could not care what the story is i want to go around and shoot people so where yeah, does the like, story... <laughs> like brian <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so where does the story for you come in john um you know i'm a huge jrpg fan you know that's just bulk story it's just well one i'm i'm a huge movie buff so stories just stick out to me like a sword thumb in games like uncharted tomb raider i only play those type of games but like you know overwatch is the only first person shooter you will catch me playing you know, because I don't feel like, well, there's no story. Well, there's a lore, but there's no story with that. So, but like, you know, the JRPGs, the Final Fantasy, <laughs> right? The Final Fantasies, the Personas, the, you know, even go back as far as Xenogears. That's when I really fell in love with stories and games like Xenogears and Final Fantasy Seven. You know, they just stick out to me. I, I don't know. I just, I'm just a sucker for them. I love them. And you're the sort of complete opposite in that regards. Though, right? <laughs> well, is like you, like me, you want to go around and shoot people like Goldeneye. <laughs> well, right, you know, and I you read know, too. That's uh, another one. It's, Sorry, it's, it's it's just because I've gotten older. You know, when I was younger, I loved like the aspect of every story. Now it's more or less like, okay, can I get into the game gameplay? Check. Okay okay now let me pay attention to the story because now it's kind of flipped because i i want a really good story but i need to be able to play it for an extended period of time to complete the story so now instead of me just playing everything just for story i need to be able to know that you know the gameplay will carry me through the story as well so I focus more on gameplay now. So yeah, I'm like a shoot first. It's like, okay, the controls feel good. You know, I can kill these, you know, enemies in a particular way that feels, you know, not want to say natural, you know, that's just, it's kind of a terrible way to, you know, say that, but uh, if it feels, if it feels good, oh, I guess, it. you know, yeah, if it feels good. Then, then, then I'll keep playing and I'll experience the story. So. One of the questions that you ask on your show every time that you uh, record is, what have you been playing today? So, Brian, what have you been playing today? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Chris. It's not even. It's it's what you've been playing all day, bro. You know? Sorry. You gotta... sorry. What have you been playing all day, bro? Bro, there come on. Go. Been... Yeah, go ahead. My name's Chris, Chris you know? Brown. I'm white. Okay. <laughs> hey, man, listen. There's a, there's, a, there's a very famous Chris Brown, you know. Uh, hey. you know, breezy you know what i mean um <laughs> but uh, i've been playing uh gears tactics I actually jumped into that on uh the good old game pass from microsoft uh, so. which we're going to talk about game pass here for uh, in a few minutes but what is uh, what is the game about because i've never heard of it so why should someone go out and pick it up oh uh, so you know the gears of war series it's it's just that, but an RTS, you know, a real time strategy game. It's just you know, uh, similar to like an XCOM. Um, yeah, so it's just it's just Gears of War universe with a pretty cool, you know, uh, strategy tactics element to it. I, I dig it though, you know, I dig it. Sometimes you need to break up the monotony of just regular stuff. You know what I mean? True that. Now, what about yourself, bruh? Is bro, bro, <laughs> bro. Um, bro. no, um, 
I haven't really been playing. It's been a busy week for me. I haven't been playing anything really this week outside of uh, Smash and a little bit of Persona 3. Uh, you know, because I picked up Persona 3. I was, they threatened to close down the stores and everything. You know, the PlayStation yeah. Vita store and the 3 store. So I've been playing that on Vita, but, you know, they undid that. So I'm like, okay. But, you know, mainly Smash is what I've been playing recently because it was just pick up and go and, you know, something quick. So, I'm not like in that. depth. Like I don't have Game Pass yet, like <laughs> like Brian. So, <laughs> so for those who might not know what Smash is, Smash is what? Sma- Super Smash Brothers on Nintendo Switch. I'm sorry. That's what I thought. I just wanted. To- <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> you never, you never assume in this industry. Okay? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so you you seem to both have two different types of uh. uh interest when it comes to gaming and even when it comes to consoles I, there's a few times that you guys fight over which console you should be using or which game pass you should be using um the gaming console wars in this world is so huge we've got pc we've got xbox we've got playstation we've got nintendo we, so on and so on and so on where does this war go in the grand scheme of things, in your opinion? Is it ever going to die out and just one will be left standing? Or do you think that there's such a market for all of them to be in there still today? Ooh, Brian, you want to take I, it? I think <laughs> I think there's room for everyone. Um, I think that, you know, if you look at everyone's uh, stance on what they want to provide, you know, you have the Game Pass angle from Microsoft that's really really all about just kind of consumer slash you know netflix gaming wise um and then you have sony that's like hey we want to kind of make your you know your blockbuster movies but in games format so that's you know your uncharted you know your um the last of us your horizons your god of wars then you have nintendo who's always going to be you know the house of mario zelda you know and and whatever thing that they decide to do and so everyone just can do whatever they want to do. I think the the fanboys are the ones that kind of really go crazy for, you know, this whole console war. Um, and it's really a, a small handful of those individuals that actually exist. They're just very loud. <laughs> very loud. What about yourself, Jonathan? Do you think there's, do you think that the industry, like uh, Brian said, is actually going to be there still for years to come? I feel it is. And it's like, you know, Game Pass did reignite the console wars because it kind of died down. It's kind of like, you know, everybody stayed in their own lane. lane. People had their preferences. People had their opinions still. People don't have their opinions regardless of what's going on. But, um, you know, Game Pass brought it. And, you know, now everybody's waiting for what see what PlayStation's next move is. So that kind of reignited it. But I feel, you know, at the end of the day, people don't like what they like. And, you know, to piggyback off of what Brian said, you know, is is to me like, I like Nintendo. He likes everything. I, you know, I, it's, it's just, you know, it depends on what you like. I feel it's going to always be there. People, like you said, like Brian said, it's always going to be opinions. It's always going to be people, the, the fanboys, the trolls, you know, I feel it's more than a handful though, honestly, it's really, a handful. but you know, they, some were loud, some were quiet. So I don't know, but you know, it's, it's up to preference. If you know, you like what you like, if you know, it's always going to you know be a thing. People won't find a way to, reignited again like mm-hmm. xbox is better than playstation no playstation yeah. better than nintendo nintendo's better than ball of, ball of them you know it's always going every be that. every Regardless. single tweet that sony sends out <laughs> immediately the first response is xbox better yeah. every single time <laughs> every See, single time so, it doesn't matter what it is it could be like yeah so, we have a summer sale you know xbox better okay <laughs> Seems weird, but um, you mentioned it briefly there, Brian, but uh, sorry, uh, Jonathan, Brian, um, but you, John, you said that Game Pass is here, but we're waiting to see what PlayStation comes out with. PlayStation right. is going to be coming out with their, and I want to make sure I get the name here right, PlayStation Plus Video Pass. That yeah, is, I did see it, that, yeah. It seems like that is going to be their uh, answer to Xbox's Game Pass. Do you think this is the wave of the future for video games? Is the Game Pass scenario? Yes. Yeah. I think, yeah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Brian. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it's interesting with with the uh, the the video pass, the PlayStation Plus video, because you know we saw last generation where Microsoft wanted to do more of a 
television slash, you know, uh, you know, just have in-house studios to make, you know, shows and movies about games. And that kind of didn't really pan out. So it's interesting to see Sony kind of pivot, you know, to do this. I'm not sure exactly what it all means. And uh, but I don't know. We already have The Last of Us TV show coming, but that's on HBO. So just kind of wonder, like, what else are they what else are they going to decide to utilize to kind of bring to life, I guess. And just off of that, that show will be filmed in my hometown right here of Calgary, nice. Alberta. So we're excited <laughs> to see that come. I will be going down there to probably see if I can get it be an extra, probably not due to, due to COVID, but hell, you never know. You never, <laughs> never know, man. Never, never shoot your shot. Yeah, um, shoot it, bro. We are, we are living in a world where streaming services have been the rage with movies. Uh, we see Apple using their Apple Arcade, where you buy three ninety nine. Game Pass is here. Is this going to take away GameStop, EB Games, uh, Walmart selling video games over the counter in about five years, or is the hard copy of the game still going to be needed? I think it's going to be like you know, like the music industry. You know, everybody streaming music now. They just took away all CD departments and all, like Best Buy, and you yeah. know, I don't, I don't even know if FYP still exists. Um, saying all the same not. yeah, right. So you know, I think there, it's not going to be overnight, but it's going to ev- eventually go the way of that because every like myself personally, like I'm <laughs> rebuying all my physical copies on digital. So it's like people are going the way of that. And I know a few people that's doing that as well. And so that's why they're slowly making like, you know, like the PS5, they had the disc version, then they had the digital version. So I think it, eventually it will go that way. Is that a benefit to the industry? Do you believe? Mm-hmm. Anyone <laughs> wants to take that on? I don't you I, know. I, th- I see a shaking of the head. So I'm assuming Brian thinks it's a no. I it's so, you know, it's a natural progression, right? You know, like John said, you look at, you know, uh music, you know, you look at movies, you know, there's no more Sun Coast, there's no more blockbuster mm. video, obviously. Like there's no there's no room for physical media, you know. And personally I hate physical media, which is why everything I have, none of it has a disk drive. Um, but uh I just <laughs> my kids my kids don't know what physical media is you know what i mean like they have you know well my five-year-old has no concept of physical media um i bought her a switch game and she just kind of was like what is this and i was like it goes in the switch and she was like but there's already games on there daddy and i was like i know those are downloaded (laughs) she was like okay i don't i'm not gonna play that game (laughs) okay Wow. But, yeah. <laughs> but I think uh, beginning, I, I think it's I think it's going to be like that's how it'll be. And you lose control. You know, us as consumers, we lose control because, you know, you have a situation like um, uh, the Mario 35th anniversary where they you can't download those games again anymore. You know, the, the Mario uh, Sunshine um, Galaxy and what was the other one? Um, there. Sunshine Galaxy and uh, was it 64? 64. 64, yeah, yeah, you can't you can't buy that anymore. Again. You know, like they held it to what I think the 39th of uh March or the 30 or 30. Did I say 39th? The 29th? Yeah. <laughs> the I wasn't 29th. gonna correct you. I was like, let him go. I was about to roll. <laughs> You're his friend. I'm the host. <laughs> I got yeah. you. Yeah. Either the 25th or the 29th, um, they, you know, discontinued that. So you can't purchase it unless you can find it physically. Right, John? I think you can still find it physically. You can. And, um, yeah, you can find them physically. They like GameStop. They Disney, they Disney vaulted Mario, bro. Wow. Why not? Why not? I mean, they announced that ahead of time. Never mind. This is why I get mad at John. <laughs> this is why I get mad at John. They announced this that is con- ahead of time. completely unconsumer, and he's... This is anti-consumer. And just this like, is okay. perfect for a podcast when two people fight. It brings a, like a whole new audience. So go ahead, <laughs> argue you want. I'm just gonna sit back, listen to you guys fight about Mario. <laughs> like I've never, I didn't think that in 2021 I'd be listening to a fight about Mario, but here we are. Here we are. Here we are, Chris. You know, um, we are 
in a, in a we're talking about an industry that is moving more and more to a individuality. Uh, we have now systems who are coming out with their, <coughs> pardon my, sorry there. No work. Uh, we have uh, systems that are coming out with game exclusives. Only their system will carry the game. Uh, what we see that with Spider Man and PS4, Spider Man Miles Mar uh, uh, Miles. I forget. I, I apologize. Morales. 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 Thank you. My mind's not there right now. <laughs> um, and that's for PS. Do we see that coming into the future? Where you know what? You can only get one game for one system. Or do you believe? That's a good. There's going to be some more cross uh, console partnerships here. I feel it's going to be more. Um, you know, Nintendo. And we spoke about this on a recent episode. Nintendo and Microsoft are starting a collaboration. We don't know what, but you know, um, like my friend sent me a picture of uh, um, a game that said I forgot what game he was playing, but it says Sony Interactive on his Xbox. So it's like you know, oh, it's one of those MLB the show. That, yeah. So it's like prime example. You know, I think it's like exclusivity is kind of eventually going to fade away. I don't know. Like, I don't, I doubt I'll ever see Kratos on Game Pass, but we don't know. We don't know what the future holds. Personally, I think it's slowly everybody's just going to start working together. Will that be beneficial for the industry, do you believe, Brian? I think the industry is, I think it's at a really interesting point where, you know, as you saw Google, you know, with Stadia, uh, you know, Amazon has, you know, I think it's called Luna. Um, Might not be up here in Canada, but okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it's, I think it's totally like on a, uh, a beta uh, type of deal anyway. So you can choose to like, I think, sign up for this beta with Luna. I think that's what it's called. Um, and I think that's what it was. And I, and I think I had to pay for it. And I was like, I don't want to be a part of your Stadia Lite beta test. You know, like I just, I'm, I'm good on that technology for now. In the future, you know, the whole streaming jazz, you know, I'll be there. But I think you look at, you know, how in the past it was, you know, uh, Nintendo and Sega and then Nintendo and Sony and, the Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft, and it's been like that for a long time. But I think you'll see, you know, a, a change in which you know Microsoft has said like their competitor is you know Apple or Google or Amazon. It's not Sony, you know, because Sony is not that type of company. They're you know they're a hardware manufacturer, and pretty much that's it. You know, um, whereas you have Google, Amazon, they're all service-based companies that have tons of data that they they can utilize in any manner that they want if they really want to. So I think, you know, as time goes on, you'll see like if these, if, uh, you know, these other companies feel that they can, you know, um, make money in this space, you know, you have Facebook gaming as well, you know, if they feel like that this is something that they can truly make money with, I think you'll see the billion dollar company eat the smaller billion dollar companies, you know, if at all possible, if it's inevitable, it's inevitable, you know, type well, of deal. Just on that note, um, you are seeing more and more gaming on your individual iPad, your iPhone, things that you can take with you and go sit in the car while your mom and dad are driving, sit in the car while someone mm -hmm. else is driving. Do you believe that the age of consoles of actually sitting in front of a TV is coming to an end here? And it's going to be more, and I and I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of support the Switch Nintendo Switch here. But do you think it might be going to more of a Switch where you can take it with you and go? Anyone wants to take that? Um, I think consoles are always are going to be around. I don't. Um, it, that's another preference thing to me. Um, you know, like I love handhelds. Brian hates them. So you know, there are people that just don't like handhelds and don't like mobile. I mean, if you're a kid, yeah, they prefer that, you know, but you like, especially- They don't have to drive. Like you <laughs> that. So, you know, <laughs> you know, like some people prefer, you know, sitting at home in front of the TV, you know, doing it that way. I think they're always gonna be around. You know, and they got the one up machines too. Those are, you know, you can bring those home too. So, it's, you know, it's a preference thing. I, I think they're always gonna be there. I think it'll still shift. I think it'll be, I think we'll get, I think this is probably one of the last, if not the last generations that we get, you know, this 
400 dollars console, you know. I think if I think if if we really start to care about our internet infrastructure, I think streaming will actually take off because it's just again, it's it's everything goes that way. Music, you know, movies, our, all of our entertainment has become like this like almost wrapped up product and then like given to us like hey you can have as much as you want whenever you want and we're just like oh okay yeah like just just give me that i'll pay what seven dollars ten dollars fifteen dollars twenty five dollars a month you know you know because i you know people feel like okay the the reason why game pass wins so much is because it's such a good value proposition it's you know 15 bucks and you get to play mad games like Right, but that's also contingent upon if per, if a person has like a PC, you know what I mean, like a strong enough know, PC. No, no. If you have a if you have an Xbox, you have Game Pass. It's not, but that's still it's buying not, a console. No, I'm talking about in the future. Oh, you know, okay. You're not, you know, but still, and you could still stream Game Pass games on phone. So some games. Ew. So you know, streaming is going to be the thing. So yeah. PC gaming games have been making a resurgent lately. They seem to be, I, the last game I played on the PC was Age of Empires and that tells you my age and okay, at least someone else <laughs> played it with me. So I wasn't the only one cheating on that game every week to get more gold. But the, the re-emergence of the PC uh, console as a gaming source is that the wave of the future? Is that a new method where Microsoft and PlayStation and Nintendo have to go, okay, we have to start worrying about the PC games because they might be taking money from us as well? Anyone? Anyone? Going, going once? Going twice? Trying to, really, trying to unpack really, cra- <laughs> really crappy to have dead silence on a podcast. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. No, I, I was just trying to go. unpack your question. <laughs> Oh, okay, I can. Go ahead, B. I can answer. I mean, I think, uh, I think again, you know, the whole thing with handhelds and you know the phone and and you know being like, I hate playing my PC just because I hate sitting at the desk and playing. But you know, I do it. Um, I think the reason why we have games on PC is because it's an additional way to get money. I think that's really the only reason why you know. Microsoft and Sony decide to go to another avenue because, you know, it's viable and it's probably not as expensive from a, you know, research and development standpoint because they're all PCs essentially. So Mm -hmm. they can just make a PC PC version, I guess. And, you know, they make money. Yeah. Um, Attention spans over the last few years have gone short and short and shorter. Mm. We now see the rise of TikTok, 30 second videos that will capture your attention and then you move on. Games, you have to sit there for a long period of time. You have to invest yourself into the time and energy of either playing a role player game or a shoot 'em up game, doesn't matter what type. Uh, have you seen a change in the market of how the games are being advertised or even played compared to 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've seen the difference. You know, well, again, I'm a- For JRPG. the better or for the worse? <laughs> Both, <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> like you said, it's like, you know, the attention span is shorter, you know, people are ready to go, go, go. So they did, in essence, kind of make some games you know, short as crap, you know, like, uh, like Resident Evil seven was like nine hours. So it was like in the advertising aspect, you know, the way I find out about video games is through Twitter, through Instagram, cause I don't really watch TV. So, you know, that's how I used to find out back in the day through TVs and they used to put them in front of movie trailers, but you know, movies are now, so you can't find those. So, you know, I feel it's better and it's worse. Cause it's like, you know, the social media is helping, but you know, I don't know. It's it's kind of hard. Uh, I don't know. Be you take it because that's. I don't I know. Think, I think it's you know it's it's completely different. We have completely different vehicles to be delivered these games, whether or not we're even playing them. You know, you think of you know Twitch TV, and you think of like the community of how Twitch works. Like these 
you know, something like Among Us, which is not a mm. long game, essentially, you know, and yet you have people, you know, uh, fall guys feverishly playing these games for yeah. hours and hours and hours on end. And that is a very different experience from the way I play, where I like to kind of sit down, get involved, whereas, you know, these smaller games, which are making billions of dollars, which is, mm -hmm. it just blows my mind. It's like, you know, you got these guys, you know, and gals in a garage and they make this game and, you know, a few months go by and then it, someone plays it and it goes viral. And before you know it, they're billionaires. Yeah. And it's, it's like, whoa. And Right, and that's you know that's like Twitter, like AOC was playing um Alex, um Alexandria Cortez in the state. You know she. Oh, we we know her quite well up here. We, we... right, yeah. <laughs> so she was playing Among Us, and it blew up more than it was. You know, you know. So that's again the Twitter's yeah. the social media thing that's pushing it. So that's yeah, it's completely it's completely different. Like my kids mm -hmm. don't, they're not at a place where they want to play anything remotely like I play. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> they'll play they'll play minecraft they'll play roblox you know they'll play mm -hmm. um mario they play mario <laughs> oh, christmas <laughs> plays, plays zelda yeah okay i finally got into skylanders guys so let's just oh. yeah that's that that's where our family's at right now oh, okay. <laughs> oh wow um yeah uh, you, you mentioned twitch and i want to talk about that for a few seconds here um what's your opinion on the for-profit gaming industry that is now alive and well with Twitch. I think it's cool. I think mm -hmm. it's awesome. I, I, I like to uh, throw in my father's face uh, about <laughs> all the times he told me that, that, you know, playing video games wouldn't, you know, equal <laughs> a job, you know? <laughs> <laughs> now it's, uh, yeah, you can totally be a professional gamer from your home. Mm -hmm. And I tip my pet, my hat off to people that do that like full time because yeah. I, I, Brian and I tried it and just wasn't the Can't move do it. for me <laughs> at all. So I was like, I don't like this. It was, you know, it just felt it was a lot. It was a lot, a lot of work, in my opinion. You know, I just, you know, you I have to constantly talk. You have to constantly, you know, you know, interact with the, uh, you know, your chatters or, you know, the people that wish, the the watchers or the lurkers or whatever. But, you know, you just got to keep it keep it doing it. and it, it was just it wasn't for me at all and i like appreciate it and i you know tip my hat off to everybody that does that because that was a lot of work but mm -hmm. i feel this you know they deserve the success they have absolutely one of the things that i've never been able to wrap my head around when it comes to tw uh, the watching other people play video games is that watching <laughs> other people play video games why do you think it's such become such a big thing now? Because you're now watching someone else play a game that you literally, literally have bought and you could be playing yourself. Um, some people, well, I only speak for personal experience. And, you know, yeah. I have nephews and stuff that, you know, watch. They just get a kick out of it, like seeing the comments. They look more at the the streamer than what was being streamed, like the, the animator, the, you know, like mark plier and people like that they just animated yeah. you know they like that aspect but for me i look at it to see like you know what the gameplay is like how it is how it runs you know stuff like that if i do delve into that i don't watch it for long but you know i don't watch the entire stream but you know just to see how the like an advertising type of thing you know to go back to the other question you know that's another way to advertise a game but you know the yeah i don't you don't <laughs> Like, you, you, know, you I, couldn't sit there and watch someone else play, could you, Brian? No, not at all. I can't. <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, you know, like John said, like, I'll watch John. Like, if John wants to show me something or I want to show John something. But, like, now yeah. we have, like, a different way to do it on my PC. But, um, <laughs> yeah, like, that's pretty much the only way I use it now. Like, if I'm showing John, like, a game, like, yo, check this game out. And mm. by chance, other people might come in here, but they won't. So... <laughs> We are recording this in April of 2021. We have a few months uh, uh, into this year. What are you looking forward to in the gaming world this year in 2021? Anyone wants to take that? What are some of the games that you're looking forward to or potentially wanting to get your hands on this year? I just spoke to Brian about this before we jumped on. I'm like May is going to be my month. Like Resident Evil Eight, I'm looking forward to. I think that comes out on May seventh, 
And then Shin Megami Tensei 3 comes out May 27th. I want those. I, um, I'm a huge persona fan. My friends about to kill me when they hear this, you know, because <laughs> they're just upset and tired of me talking about this damn game. But, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, Persona news because today, this year's the uh, 25th anniversary in September for uh, for Persona. So, you know, they're talking about Persona 3 remake. I, I'd be down for that. And I, some Persona 6 news would be great. And um, if Final Fantasy 16 comes out this year, those, you know, those are the things I'm. Well, if it comes out this year, it's not coming out. Tell me that. So <laughs> I'm holding on to face. You like to <laughs> rub that in his face, don't you? Oh, <laughs> no, he just, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't like to see my friend get disappointed. You know, like don't believe, don't believe these people. Stop believing these people. They're not. Just you know. don't. I, you know, what are hopes and dreams? You know, <laughs> I mean, they, 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 they've only shown one trailer. There's no way that game's coming out this year. They said 2021 on the last trailer they showed. So I'm gonna go by that as far as are, are, are we still waiting for the black widow movie that's been pushed like 12 times so everything's right. being pushed around yeah so. right <laughs> i'm still holding on for hope chris <laughs> i will give you hope okay thank you chris there you go brian what about yourself what are you looking forward to in 2021 uh returnal comes out um in a few days uh in about a week i believe so I, i'm looking forward to that that's the next game i'll be playing that's on uh, ps5 um looks like a really cool rogue light uh with a high budget so uh sony's talking about you know making these blockbuster games and uh from some of the previews that i've been checking out they seem to say that it looks like a really solid game so i'm excited to finally play a playstation 5 game that can only be on playstation 5 for real for real we are so like i said we're in april when we're recording this so i need you to put on your future thinking hats here what's the biggest gaming uh what's the biggest game of 2021 do you believe oh mm. um if hey if halo comes out which i think Ooh. that got pushed back yeah i think that got pushed back um biggest game see- of 2021 do you see one that will be the biggest seller at Christmas? Because usually Christmas is the time when you tell what is going to be. I know we don't know what's going to be out because everything's getting pushed around with this COVID-19 yeah. stuff. But mm-hmm. is there a game that you're looking at saying this could be it this year? It, or even for the uh, Game Awards of 2021 as well? If uh, God of War comes out this year, I think I was that about to say that. That would be probably the biggest game this year, at least personally for me. Um, mm-hmm. Can't speak for everyone else. No, for sure. That will be that, that was going to be my answer. Um, either that or, you know, a lot of people are talking about Ratchet and Clank. I don't, will it take game of the year? I doubt no. it. But, you know, a lot of people talking about that. <laughs> no. <thing. There's> God. <laughs> Short and sweet. No. Uh, but Returnal's getting a lot of buzz. Um, you know, Hades killed it last year as far as the road, like, concept so you know yeah they big budget the, big budget roguelikes that's, yeah. that's the next big thing yeah if they take the momentum off of that you know along with you know the big budget and everything yeah i think returnal is going to be pretty huge and awesome. what was that what was that game you just showed me be tales of arise when is that coming uh, out? I, I don't know when that comes out um sometime this year i think but that won't be a that won't be a big game. That's not the type of game. Yeah, that's a big game. No. Oh, Res- oh, Resident Evil 8. That's another one. Oh, yeah. Resident Evil 8. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Shin Megami Tensei. It's a lot. You know. <laughs> so it's between those three. Like if God of War comes out, Resident Evil 8 or Shin Megami Tensei 3. Maybe Ratchet and Clank honorable mention. I don't know. Those are my picks. Um, We are uh, closing in on the about 50 minute mark right now. Uh. I just want to ask you one last question before we start doing the wrap up here. In the last year, what was the biggest bomb that you believe that should have got more attention in the gaming industry? In the last year? In last the last year. year of 2020 or even the last 10 years. What is the what is the game that you think should have gotten more attention in the last year, last 5 years and just explain why do you think it should have gotten more? For me, Yakuza Like a Dragon should have gotten more. Um, it was it was amazing. Um, if you're a JRPG fan, if you're a Yakuza fan, it, the story was amazing. The gameplay was smooth. It has ton of content. Um, it it got a little bit of buzz, but I felt it deserved more. But it came out the same year Persona Five Royal came out, 
which you know to people you know most people not me think it was the best uh well maybe jrpg of the generation so i feel yakuza like a dragon got my vote uh yeah and didn't get nominated but like for one award at the game awards which i found ridiculous yourself brian oh um man I have no idea, honestly. <laughs> so sorry, Chris. I, I was not prepared for a question like this. Um, as far as, oh man, I think. Oof. Ask, gotta ask the tough questions from time to time. Yeah, you do, man. I think. Uh, I mean, I think, I think, I think this generation that just passed has been pretty cool in that there was a lot of different games to play and a lot of different games for different people to play and. Uh, so, you know, I would look at my friends list when a huge game would come out. And most of the time, the games that I play, like my friends, like Death Stranding, none of my friends were playing that, you know, mm. um, that game was crazy. Like just Kojima all out there, you know, in his <laughs> element, just your enjoying boy. him, enjoying himself, you know, like I'm here. They're giving me money. I can do whatever I want, you know, Um and so, yeah, that was a lot, but I, it was a really cool game. I didn't beat it, but it was a really cool game for a lot of people that didn't that didn't play it. Got a good uh, revival on PC, which is always weird when people are like, they wouldn't play a walking simulator, but then they'll play it on PC. But again, it's just people that talk that don't actually play anything. They just talk, so. Mm. Yeah. Um, now, as we head into our last few minutes with this, um, uh, I've got to ask one question. Why should people tune into your podcast? Oh, it's it's your boy, Brian and John. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's it's <laughs> us. You know, we talk about, uh, you know, our our, our childhood. Uh, and John and I are in our, our I'm, I'm in my late 30s. So we're both in our late 30s. Been yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, hey. <laughs> Chris, no. we, we got a lot of subject matter, you know, to draw mm -hmm. from. You know, we got a lot of generations of a uh, video game content to you know talk about so sometimes we're talking about arcades from the 90s sometimes we're talking about 8-bit from the 80s you know sometimes we're talking about playing overwatch yesterday or the night before or literally minutes before you know <laughs> you right. you never know and we just we just kick it man you know we just have a really good camaraderie you know mm -hmm. um and we're easy going and we just want to have like a really chill place for anybody to come and you know, listen to us, you know, chat with us on um, social media uh, and just kind of just relax. Go ahead, John. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, I can't say more than what Brian already said, but, you know, I'm just going to piggyback. But, you know, yeah, we're just two chill guys. We just have great conversations regarding game. We might review a game. We have gaming news. We might have a theme of the day, you know, of the week. You know, we might have a top 10. It's, it's just, you know, a grab bag with us. But what you will see is, you know, we always are chill, relaxed, great conversationalists. Our dynamic is great. I, I feel we're hilarious because yeah. we have our tastes are drastically different as you can hear from this interview so yeah if you just i feel you like you guys are gonna punch each other if you guys ever met each other and sat down and played a game with it's each possible, other just, you know, just go into an all-out war <laughs> you never know fighter I mean, style mm. Damn, it's does like, it really does it really seem that way? <laughs> oh, it's when you, you you guys have gotten times. into a few tiffs a few times, <laughs> but then you guys like right now you guys just seem to roll off your back and go whatever. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. It's, both of us are just super easy going. You know, we just it's a brotherly. Type yeah, of it's thing. my guy right there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. um, so you mentioned social media. Where can my uh, fans and followers and listeners follow you? Oh, oh, you okay. can follow me. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, John. Do you want no? To go talk? ahead. No, no, go ahead. They're all oh, cordial now, okay? Because <laughs> <laughs> I usually do that at the end of the show. Yeah, so I'm so used to it. he does. But it, but it's usually on the screen for him to see. So, but uh, personally, myself, uh, I'm at uh, Brian P underscore eighty three on uh, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, mm -hmm. The show is All Day I Play Radio on Instagram. And then on Twitter, 
Yes. It's at ADIP Radio. You can follow me on Twitter at 9000 Moon Knight, like the Marvel hero, K N I G H T for night. And Moon Knight 9000 on Instagram. I apologize for the confusion. Twitter took, for some reason, the name was taken. But anyway, yeah, you can follow me on those two social medias. <laughs> yeah, it's like backwards. But yeah, you can follow us on All Day I Play on YouTube. You can follow us on, um, we're on all your favorite streaming platforms. And yeah. Mm-hmm. So to my listeners, I will link uh, John and Brian's uh, Twitter, Instagram, Thank their you. show's Instagram, their show's YouTube channel, their, uh, the link to Apple Podcasts and Spotify in the show notes. I would highly recommend checking it out because they seem oh. like two great guys. Um, I will be sharing your shows in the future because you guys seem oh, like two, two amazing guys and hopefully you'll get some good traction up here in Canada and Thank you uh, so we much. can get you some more listeners. So thank you so much for doing this, guys. Well, thank you for having it, us. Thanks, Chris. Thank you so much, buddy. We no really problem. appreciate you. Thank you.